So today we reviewed Ferris Bueller's Day Off, one of the greatest 80s films of all time. This is just my opinion, but it's true. I didn't have to watch this movie again to review it because I've seen it probably a hundred times, but I did because I really like this movie. Everybody wanted to be Ferris Bueller in high school. Everybody wanted that chance just to take the day off, do whatever they wanted, go to an art gallery, go to a baseball game, go drive a Ferrari around town, and go sing in a fucking parade. How could you not like this movie? There's something for everybody in this movie. You watch this movie whenever it's on. I just, I'll be surfing through the channels and I'll see it on whatever, TBS, and I have to put it on. And luckily every time I put it on, it's almost always the parade scene, which is one of the best scenes of the whole movie and most memorable. This movie was in 1986, my birth year, and it's still timeless. This movie is epic. John Hughes wrote it, directed it. He wrote it in six days and he just did an amazing job. It's such a great movie all around. Matthew Broderick was so big in the 80s, it was ridiculous. This movie pretty much inspired 20, 30 years of movies afterwards. Um, they still reference this movie to this day of how great it is. He comes off of this and afterwards I really just can't remember anything else good he did. It's terrible. He did Godzilla, uh, The Stepford Wives, Inspector Gadget, just boring movies to me that were no good. And he settled for Sarah Jessica Parker of all people. He could have had any chick he wanted, and he got hurt. I don't understand that, flabbergast, whatever. Alan Ruck is his best friend in this movie, as Cameron. Cameron was one of the funniest guys in this movie. I can't say he's underrated because he, is, he gets so much airtime and he's just so nervous and cautious and he's just terrified of everything. And that's what makes it so funny is Ferris is making him do all these things that he doesn't want to do. And by the end of it, he has a good time and he stands up for himself and you're really happy to see it. Ferris had the hot chick in here. He had Sloane Peterson as his girlfriend, which was like, the hottest chick when I was growing up. This movie also has Jennifer Grey in it, who is Ferris's sister, and she dislikes that her brother can do whatever he wants, so she always tries to catch him in the act of doing whatever he's doing. To me, this is one of her more memorable roles that I really liked, because the only other movies I've really seen her in that I remember were Red Dawn and Dirty Dancing. I don't care. I've seen it. Mr. Rooney in the whole thing is chasing down Ferris, trying to catch him, because he knows he's skipping, and he just wants to catch him in the act. He goes so far to break into Ferris's house to catch him, and it's just hilarious. And because he's trying to catch Ferris, all these bad things happen to him. <laughs> I love Grace in this movie. One of my favorite scenes was when Grace says, do you still need Mr. Peterson's number? And he gives her the look like you're an idiot. But Grace, I found out, was ab almost everything. Charlie Sheen pretty much plays himself in this movie. He doesn't really play himself, but he plays a he plays a guy that got arrested by the cops for drugs. Um, supposedly, he stayed up for 48 hours to get the drug effect look, but we all know the truth, Charlie. Come on. The dude's from Mars, and he's got tiger blood, so he was probably high as hell the whole time. Ben Stein's in this movie. He gives his uh, lecture on economics, and it's one of the funniest lectures you'll ever see. It's so boring and just terrible, but I was reading about this movie more, and he was actually giving a real lecture. He actually holds a degree in economics, so John Hughes just said, hey, just give an actual lecture about economics. <laughs> And I want to say I bet those kids were actually really bored the whole time. Oh, the Ferrari. The Ferrari in this movie is beautiful. And it's so great. And they're driving it around and then the, the parking garage guys take it for a ride. And it was so sad to me when they crashed it. When I, I found out that they actually crashed an MG, not a Ferrari. And that people were really mad when they crashed that Ferrari. They wrote them angry letters. But it's not a Ferrari. It's an MG. I would love to see them try to remake this movie. It would flop in a heartbeat. This movie is a masterpiece. It's one of the funniest comedies of all time. And if you haven't seen it... I don't even know where you're watching this review. Go watch Ferris Bueller right now. Every time I watch this movie, it makes me forgive Matthew Broderick. All the crap that you did afterwards, it's all forgiven because you did Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Also, War Games. Talk to you guys later.